recital hall in the Steinberg Fine Arts Center at Northeastern Illinois University, celebrating WFMU's 70th anniversary. Celebrating WFMU's 70th anniversary. I am joined by Monument Mysterium by Thomas Luis de Victoria. by Thomas.
Beautiful. Hi, I'm Larab K. Raphael, and this is Music of the Baroque. I am joined now by Andrew McGill, who is the curator and conductor for this series today. And Andrew, thank you so much for being here, first of all. Thank you. And tell me a little bit about what we just heard. Sure. So the, the first piece is one of the most famous Renaissance motets about Christmas, O Manu Mysterium. And it's, it's uh, sort of, for me, set the tone for much of the program that we chose afterwards. One of the things I love about it is the way that it, it, it evokes a, a mysticism and a sort of a, a physical awe at the ideas of incarnation and the ideas of, of the divine interrupting ordinary human life, yeah. which lies at the heart of the, the Christmas story. And so the, the second piece we heard is related in many ways to the Victoria. They're both Spanish. The Spanish is, uh, the Victoria is from the 16th century. The second piece is an anonymous 10th century piece mm -hmm. that's actually been sung in, in certain um, Spanish Catholic churches from the 10th century until, oh, a few weeks, uh, next week, I suppose. <laughs> and um, it, was, it has a really fascinating history. It's a, it's a text that was thought to have been written prophesied by an ancient Roman uh, prophetess yeah. who uh, obviously is disconnected from the Christian tradition, but the, the Renaissance Christians fell in love with the idea that the Greeks and Romans were looking towards the same, same sort of uh, goal of what human, humanity could mm -hmm. become. Mm -hmm. And so they adopted this text. And it uh, was sung fascinatingly in the 10th century by a priest in drag, dressed as one of these prophetesses on Christmas Eve okay. at midnight. Nice. And so this idea of this, this bizarre otherworldly mysticism mm -hmm. connects these two pieces in a way for me. Definitely, and that was an arrangement of your own. It right? is, it's largely just sort of an improvised thing, so it's barely arranged. It's sort okay. of a beautiful <laughs> tune that we sort of put a few drones underneath, awesome. but, uh, but yeah. Awesome, and we'll hear more of your arrangement and pieces a little bit later on, including a few Omanu Mysteriums, a few more at least. Exactly, this whole program is built around four Omaniums. We'll sing two or three of them for you today. Awesome, and then obviously we're here for WFMT's celebration. This is our 70th anniversary today. And to you, what is the significance of a classical radio station like WFMT? I think one of the really important things for us in the 21st century is those of us who have had our lives enriched and really transformed by the great music of the past and the present, have sort of a moral obligation to let other people have the same opportunity to have their, mm. their souls so enlivened. Mm -hmm. And I think it's less and less likely to happen through chance happenings at church or at home. Mm. And so I think more and more the technology of, uh, around us is what brings people the same human nourishment that we've always needed, Definitely. but we get it from different sources today than we might have gotten a hundred, you know, at the time of Victoria. Absolutely. And what people went in it, you know, in a way what people went to church for, that connection of their soul to something larger than themselves is done through classical music on the radio waves. Absolutely. The way that we can hear the most inspiring and, and challenging music ever written. Absolutely. Well, we're certainly glad to have you here, excited to hear more music from Music of the Baroque, including this next chunk of music, which includes some uh, lassus and bird. But this first piece you mentioned is, uh, has a composer who's unknown. Is that correct? That's right. This first piece is, uh, is an American shape note hymn okay. uh, that appeared in early American hymnals in the early 1800s. And so it probably was being sung during the time we think of as the Baroque, mm -hmm. but we don't often associate the Baroque with especially the United States. And so I think it's wonderful to have some music that, you know, maybe was sung just after the death of Bach and Handel in this country. And it's of such a different spirit, um, but I think one that's recognizable to us as really essentially American. Awesome. Well, this is Hail the Blessed Morn, Star in the East, including some lassus and Bird to Follow by Music of the Baroque. Stop! 
stunning. Hi, everyone. I'm Larab K. Raphael again, and I'm celebrating WFMT's 70th anniversary with Music of the Baroque in the Steinberg Fine Arts Center Recital Hall at Northeastern Illinois University. I'm joined now with Executive Director De Declan McGovern, I'm sorry, and Andrew McGill again. Thank you for being here, Declan. Great to be here. Awesome. Thank so, you for uh, inviting us to be part of this absolutely, great day. Absolutely. I mean, what else would we do? <laughs> <laughs> um, if, if you can just step up a little bit. Awesome. So tell us about the relationship with, uh, between music of the Baroque and WFMT, even. Well, it goes way back. This is your <laughs> 70th anniversary. We're celebrating our 50th anniversary. Okay. And uh, right from day one, uh, music of the Baroque started uh, giving concerts in the early 70s. Mm. And uh, WFMT has been with the organization right from the very beginning. And I think it's part of the reason why we have a complete recorded legacy of every concert we've done. Yeah. And I wonder if we didn't have WFMT and the opportunity to broadcast from the very beginning of our organization, mm. would we have that complete legacy of recordings? Because wow. we don't put everything out on CD mm -hmm. or you know, make it commercially available as a recording. Right. So I think that's redolent of the relationship between radio and live music making, but particularly in this city. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that singing, what we're listening to is um, timeless almost because of that relationship with radio, that you can hear it out, out of sequence, in sequence, live, yeah. not live. And, um, you know, it extends our audience way out beyond mm -hmm. the concert hall, which is the other great magic about radio. Exactly, yeah. Well, it seems like Music of the Baroque and WFMT both have a very, very long history that we hope to see continue for another 70 or 50 years. Yes, we do. Do you happen <laughs> to have a favorite WFMT memory of a recording session or anything? <laughs> well, lots. Um, I've only been in the city four and a half years, okay. but an early memory was um, 2018 when we performed at Baroque in the Park at the uh -huh. Pritzker Pavilion, mm. and WFMT broadcast that concert live that night. So wow. it's not very often you get to perform with a Baroque music group in front of 5,000 people, but for it to be live as well, right. just it was, a, it was a great buzz and a great thrill. And actually, the most recent Baroque in the Park co concert that we did in mm -hmm. September, I believe will go out on WFMT on New Year's Day. Mm. So it's another example of this ability to, you know, re-energize and restart yes. and, and relive and remember great performances. And Absolutely. that's, that's kind of timelessness when you have that rapport between radio and and a group like ours. Absolutely, timeless, beautiful music making and sharing. <laughs> what else can be said? And speaking of beautiful music, we have more coming up. Um, I think the next section of music opens with some Wilcox. That's right. Okay. So we'll do people. we'll two two arrangements of, of uh, Eastern European carols by David Wilcox, the great the great British conductor. But we're doing them a slight twist. Oh. We're going to do them in their. Uh, we'll do one of them in its original language, the Polish okay. Wojciechowski Leisure. Okay. Um, his arrangement is known as Infant Holy, but mm -hmm. partly. Uh, it's so, the, the language itself is so beautiful and it's a little bit of a tip of the hat to the many cultural strands that make up Chicago. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to do a piece in Polish. Definitely. That. So and that's then, the Wilcox piece we'll do. Yeah, and then you'll give us a little bit of holiday flair with some holiday esque exactly. ding we'll donging. An, an arrangement of mine, of uh, Ding Dong <laughs> Marilyn High, that, that uh, actually in the middle captures another Wilcox, uh, okay. quotes it a bit. Awesome. And then we'll close with, with what has been the traditional ender for this group's holiday concert for as long as memory can go back. So, <laughs> the Pretorius Essestein Rose, which is, uh, I think when you hear it, you'll know why it's become such a favorite. Awesome. Well, what better performers to have helping us celebrate our 70th anniversary today. Um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sharing this beautiful music with us, and I'm excited to hear the next bit. Thank you. Thank you so much, awesome. and happy anniversary. Thank you.
music of the Baroque singing Es ist ein Ross entsprungen by Michael Pretorius. Um, I'm Lorab K. Raphael here at the Steinberg Fine Arts Center Recital Hall at Northeastern Illinois University celebrating WFMT's 70th anniversary. Thank you so much, you beautiful singers, for sharing this music with us. Thank you, Declan McGovern, and thank you, Andrew McGill. Turning things back over into our studios to Candice Agree. To Candice.